The Endorphin Pro 3 was one of my favorite racing shoes of 2022, but a lot of shoes have come out since this shoe was initially released last summer. So now that I've run 100 miles in the Endorphin Pro 3, it's time to talk not only about how this shoe has held up over the miles, but also whether this shoe still belongs in that top tier of marathon racing shoes. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Endorphin Pro 3 after 100 miles. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe and how it's held up, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I bought myself. No one sent it to me or is paying me to make this video and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Endorphin Pro 3 after 100 miles. First, let's talk about how I've been using the shoe. I've been using this shoe as a marathon racer. It was one of my favorite racing shoes of last year and to cut to the chase, it's still is one of my favorite racing shoes. Although I will say that like my grouping of favorite racing shoes just seems to be getting bigger and bigger. And that's a really good thing for us runners because it just means that we have lots of great options and the Endorphin Pro 3 is definitely one of them. Now the Endorphin Pro 3 does share some similarities with its predecessor, the Endorphin Pro 2, like the very aggressive carbon and the beaded Piba foam that it uses. But I feel like this year's foam feels either softer and or a little bit taller, where I feel like they've moved a little bit more foam directly underneath the pads of my foot, right where my midfoot, forefoot, foot strike hits the ground. And it just feels like a shoe that's a little bit more forgiving and is now finally a shoe that I can take for the marathon distance. Now, when I ran the Chicago Marathon in this shoe, I was pacing my running buddy. And so for me, it was more of a steady run when I was out there. And the shoe did great when I was doing a longer steady run being out there for three hours and 45 minutes. But I also find the shoe really capable of ripping threshold mile repeats until I'm dry heaving. So it's very capable of turning up the intensity and showing up for those tougher workouts. But now let's talk about how this shoe has been holding up over those 100 miles. I feel like this shoe does a remarkable job of staying very consistent kind of from beginning to now to the 100 mile point. And I feel like I'd be very confident in lining up, getting to the starting line in this shoe now at the 100 mile mark and even much further than the normal kind of 150 miles that I feel like racing shoes today can easily handle in terms of being race ready. I feel like this shoe can push even further past that. And then even when it gets past its kind of racing prime, I think that this shoe is gonna do a really great job at being one of your favorite training or session shoes shoes afterward. So I feel like you're actually going to get a lot of mileage out of this shoe in terms of like my projections of its overall long-term durability. Aside from some discoloration of the foam and a little bit of dirt on it, the shoe really looks and feels to me like a brand new shoe. The shoe is holding up remarkably well. And the other thing that I really appreciate about this shoe, even after some other really great shoes have also been released since the Endorphin Pro 3 came out, is the fact that this upper is one of my favorite uppers in racing right now. It's snug where you need it to be snug, it's roomy where you want it to be roomy, and there's no binding, pinching, chafing whatsoever. Everything about this shoe is exactly what's needed to make this shoe really comfortable and confidence inspiring. It's hard for me to overstate how much I enjoy this upper. And it all feels and looks like it's brand new. There's no signs of wear, there's no signs of potential failure points in this material. Overall, this shoe is doing a fantastic job of handling all the stresses and strains that I'm capable of putting into a shoe. Now, let's get to some summary points to wrap up this video. I think that the Endorphin Pro 3 is best for marathon racing and gripping and ripping those threshold repeats and running them over and over again until you're about to puke. But if you're looking at this shoe, there are some other shoes that are in kind of its class that I think also deserve some consideration. One of the shoes that I think you should be taking a look at if you're looking at the Endorphin Pro 3 is the Adidas 
Adios Pro 3. I feel like there's a lot that is similar about these two shoes. They have similar stack heights and their geometries in the forefoot in terms of putting a lot of foam right underneath the pads of your foot is very similar and the rocker is also very similar as well. The uppers are also excellent on both of these shoes and the foams behave pretty similarly. I feel like these two shoes should be considered if you're looking at one, you should also be taking a look at the other. The other shoe that I think you should consider is the Endorphin Elite. They're both in that Endorphin family. They're very similar shoes, but yet also very different. They're kind of taking a very modern approach with this one. They've got all the crazy cutouts and stuff going on with this upper. This midfoot panel like wraps all the way around the carbon in this shoe. And they're using Power Run HG foam in this shoe, which is not just Piba, but it's a super critical Piba. And I think that a lot of the things that exist and people like about the Endorphin Pro 3 are taken kind of to the next level in this shoe, especially a very aggressive Endorphin speed type of rocker. So if you're looking at the Endorphin Pro 3 and you like what it has to offer, I think you kind of also have to think about whether or not you should bump up and get the Endorphin Elite. Now, after thinking about those, if you're still thinking about going with the Endorphin Pro 3, you might want to think about some other shoes that this racer can pair with. And I think that if you want to keep it in the family, I think you should go with the Saucony Triumph 20. I feel like this will be a great everyday and recovery day shoe for you. And then the Endorphin Pro 3 will make a nice one-two punch for your training and racing or workout days. But if you're willing to look outside of Saucony, I think a really fun pairing for this shoe could be the Nova Blast 3. This is my favorite shoe from 2022. It's springy, it's bouncy, it's light and it's exciting. And it's a lot of the same words that I would use to describe the Endorphin Pro 3. So I feel like these two shoes would be a really great foundation for a very fun shoe rotation. Now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe and some of my recommendations. Like I said, it's a shoe that I can recommend to pretty much everybody. There's a lot of people that this shoe will get along with whether you're a heel striker, midfoot or forefoot striker, whether you're sub elite or whether you're in the middle of the pack. I feel like this is a shoe that's gonna be a lot of fun to race in. And the best part about it is, is that it retails at 225. Now it's been like six months since this shoe came out and we're not seeing it really on sale yet, at least as a time of film this video. So you're still going to be looking at 225 for it. Whereas some of the other shoes that came out in 2022, you might be able to get on a discount, but if you can't find those discounted other super shoes in your size, getting the Endorphin Pro 3 at 225, I feel like in a world where 250 is kind of like the normal price for racing shoes, and we're starting to see a lot more shoes at that 275 or some more even hitting that $300 mark, I think the 225 is a really good price for a really good shoe that is very different than the Endorphin Pro 2. So like, for most people, I'm not recommending that you save a couple of bucks by buying last year's version. I feel like this year's version is very different, much better compared to the Endorphin Pro 2 in my mind. So at that $225, I think that this shoe is actually a bit of a bargain. Now, the last thing that I wanna leave you guys with is, we talked a little bit about the Endorphin Elite and I just don't know what Saucony does from here when you've got two great shoes like the Endorphin Pro 3 and the Endorphin Elite. Like what happens next year? What's gonna happen with the Endorphin Pro 4? I haven't seen it yet. I don't have any information on what the Endorphin Pro 4 is gonna be, but if I can kind of like look into the future based on some information I do have, I think I'm allowed to talk about this now. I'm not, I don't think it's under embargo, but the Canvara Pro is a shoe that's coming out later this year. It's gonna be a tall stack height shoe that is intended to take some pressure off the Endorphin Speed. Now, a lot of you guys have been using the Endorphin Speed as your workout shoe and as a daily trainer, but Saucony really wants that shoe to be squarely positioned as that workout, that session shoe. So I feel like for the next Endorphin Speed that we see, it's gonna firm up a little bit. It's gonna become a little bit more workout oriented oriented and less daily trainer oriented. And that's where the Kimbara Pro comes in. So that has me thinking the Endorphin Pro 1 and 2 were firmer shoes that I loved racing half marathons in, but never wanted to take for the marathon distance. Now we have the Endorphin Pro 3 that switched up quite a bit to give us this really great shoe. But now we also have this really great shoe that I also like that is 
perfectly suited for the marathon distance. So do they keep the endorphin elite the way it is and then revert the endorphin pro back to being kind of like that half marathon racer? That's true that I think that there are certain Saucony pros that prefer the, the old way rather than this new way. It'll be interesting to see. The other thing that could happen though is they could kind of like continue like iterating on these shoes in the direction that they're going and just have two really great options for the marathon distance, like a couple of other brands. For example, we've got the Next Percent and the Alpha Fly. Now there's some people that use them kind of certain specific ways. Maybe one gets used more for half marathon racing or for marathon racing, but both of them are really good marathon shoes, but they're very different. Does Saucony stay that way with the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Elite? I'm not sure, but that's kind of the direction where I hope it goes because I didn't love the Endorphin Pro 2. I just didn't find a lot of uses for it, especially if the Endorphin Speed is gonna become like a workout shoe. I don't think like an Endorphin Pro 2 or Endorphin Pro 1 like shoe makes a lot of sense, at least in my mind. But let me know what you guys think about that, where you think Saucony should take the Endorphin Pro Series now that we've seen and experienced the Endorphin Elite. I'd love to see what you guys think. If you have any other questions about the Endorphin Pro or any of the other shoes that I talked about today, let me know in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?